Sometimes I wonder who we are. We're being held responsible for things that we did not do or say. We're being blamed for all the problems in the world. We are the children of a lesser God. We are the enemy. We're being characterized as ready to attack at any time. We do not possess the right to live. We seek to force our beliefs on others. We are filled with violence and rage. We despise peace. We beat and oppress our wives. We indoctrinate our children. We stand for that which is null and void. We are barbaric and backward. We are devoid of any reason or rationality. We lie, we cheat, we habitually practice deception. We can never be trusted. Our existence is pointless and should not be permitted to continue, or so it is said about us. Who are we? We are Muslims, but, but we are not the enemy. Yes, we are not the enemy. Who was the first black president of America? It's a fairly simple question with a straightforward answer, or so you would think. But plug the query into a search engine and the facts get a little fuzzy. Uncle Google and Wikipedia tell us that the first black president was a man called John Hansen in 1781. Interestingly, the U.S. has had seven black presidents, including Thomas Jefferson and Dwight Eisenhower. Welcome to the world of alternative facts, fake news, and outright lies packaged as information. It is a bewildering maze of claim and counterclaim, where hoaxes spread with frightening speed on social media and spark angry backlashes from people who take what they read at face value. Controversial fringe views about the perceived other can be thrown center stage by the power of search engines. It is an environment where the mainstream media is accused of peddling fake news by the most powerful men in the world. Voters are seemingly misled by the very politicians they elected. And even science is dismissed as having little value. The most dangerous of these developments is the propagation of lies that spread and intensify hatred about Muslims and Islam. Here at PeaceQuest, we are launching a special series, We Are Not the Enemy, to discuss the grand challenge we face in the 21st century, debunking the myths about Islam because having a large number of misinformed people in a society is absolutely devastating. To imagine the impact of a sustained, decades-long anti-Islam campaign, one has to look at the outcome of just one made-up story published duration-charged environment in the run-up to the last U.S. presidential election. The story claimed a pedophile ring involving high-profile members of the Democratic Party was operating out of the basement of a pizzeria restaurant in Washington. As a result, a man walked into the restaurant, which does not even have a basement, and fired an assault rifle. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Working out who to trust and who not to believe has been a facet of human life since our ancestors began living in complex societies. The difference today is how we get our information. The internet has made it possible for many voices to be heard that could not make it through the distribution controls before. Many people who were excited about this opening up to multiple voices, now express great concern because no one can control the dissemination of lies targeted to promote hate and violence. For every fact, there is an identical counterfact. It is not only confusing, but interestingly, the laws are unclear too. The same information published by one group of people is an incitement of violence and by another merely a critical analysis of Islam. While it is a matter of life and death for some, 
like those who died in a synagogue in Pittsburgh or the mosque in Christchurch. For some, perpetrators of falsehood. This simply means the slice of advertising revenue that comes from clicks as visitors follow their links. In the past, it was harder for fringe operations to get their views reinforced. Days of the kitchen table conversations are gone. Social media has enabled those fringe conversations to scale and find others who share the same worldview. What we choose to engage with is self-reinforcing, and we get shown more of the same in an exaggerated echo chamber. For example, the two recent referendums in the UK brought people to club together with people they agreed with, all making one another angrier. The debate becomes more partisan, angrier, and people are quicker to assume they are being lied to, but less quick to assume people they agree with are lying. The challenge here is how to burst these bubbles. By presenting people with accurate facts, it should be possible to at least get a debate going. However, telling people what is true does not seem to work. IBM shelved its fact-checker plans because there is a large portion of the population living in an alternative reality. They share complete falsehood with each other. Any attempt to share the reality is fraught with difficulty, as you are being dismissed as being part of the conspiracy. It is why you have people disagreeing over something as simple as how many people appear in a photograph. By suggesting things that are outside their comfort zone, but not so far outside they would never look at it, you can keep people from self-radicalizing in these bubbles. The reference to science, undeniable facts, universal truths, rather than mere personal opinions, is one good way forward. That's the approach we intend for at the We Are Not the Enemy series here at PeaceQuest. Of course, there is an unfortunate unwillingness to bend our mind around facts that don't agree with our viewpoint. By slipping into lazy cynicism about what we are being told, we allow those who lie to us to get away with it. That's why the second way is to question the falsehood and to hold the purveyors of the hate campaigns to account. Keeping the current reality in mind, PeaceQuest is launching the We Are Not the Enemy series to address at least one aspect of the rising fear and hatred in the community through facts in a simple language, brought down to the elementary school level. Please stay tuned.